are you ready for a fight? Because uh, once again, we have uh, Team Red versus Team Blue. If you have uh, seen my last video, and if you don't, uh, check it out here in the card or down in the description below, I repaired my single stage phase change cooling, so a unit that can allow me to go at negative 40 or negative 50 uh, with the CPU. And I push uh, the Intel 11600K to 5.6 GHz with uh, another boost in gear 1 frequency at uh, 3.6, and I was able to score 255 FPS on average in a World of Warcraft benchmark. And then, well, I made a poll on Twitter that you can see here, and it seems that 80% of you uh, was sure that uh, if I use the same exact cooling with the Ryzen 9 5950X, uh, I was able to beat uh, the Intel. So this fight uh, is all about uh, this. Bring uh, the 5950X uh, to negative 40 or 45, uh, as far as we can go, and well, push the frequency and see if we can beat at that specific benchmark the Intel 11600K. The base system I'm using for this benchmark is the Asus Crosshair 8 and uh, well, the AVGA RTX 3019 Kingpin with the LN2 BIOS, so it's virtually unlimited in power. And we are playing benchmarking at 1080p, so very, very far from being GPU bottlenecked. And well, uh, the phase change that I repaired uh, uh, this week, and uh, well, a couple of uh, Trident Z uh, 4600, but in this case, it's tuned to 3800 megahertz, uh, one one, so FCLK 1900, uh, tuned to C14 and very tight sub timing. So this is the the best configuration I was able to to make uh, to run this uh, test, this benchmark. So the rising is in absolutely the best condition ever. To perform on this test. So, without any further ado, let's start this fight. All right, guys, we are ready to begin. And well, sorry for the noise because the unit is very loud. Uh, if we want cooling power, we have also the noise. And uh, well, this first test uh, I want to do is at uh, the CPU with default clocks. Uh, so, with a boosting algorithm. And as you can see, we are uh, negative 47 degrees, 48, 46, so a lot of sub zero. And uh, if you notice the course, we are at uh, 5 gigahertz and 50 megahertz almost always because the boost algorithm, when it sends there's a favorable temperature, in this case, a very low temperature, it uh, usually boosts the clocks uh, to the maximum. So, if I start something really heavy, the core will still be able to max out uh, the boost clock. So if I launch like a blender or something like this, uh, we will have full power. So it's not no more up and down, but straight the full clock. So let's start with the first test uh, and see if we can make it. User command, time test one. This is the route that I used in the previous uh, benchmarking. So Keep a look at this, we have to beat uh, 256. So it seems that we have a good advantage now, but you know, you can never know benchmarking World of Warcraft. Maybe we may have a big hit, or maybe not. So as you can see now, we are at 255, 256. So we are really in a tight spot here. And see, the core are still boosting almost at maximum speed. We are not uh, CPU bound, so we have 80% of GPU. So we are not GPU bound. And 247, this is a tough spot uh, for the benchmark. So we are still behind uh, the 11600K. Yes, 245. And plus, the other one, we had uh, 191 for uh, the 1% lows. So we are still really low to be able to beat it. And well, now at the end of this benchmark, usually there's a big spike. So we may gain 5 FPS at the end, just in this uh, in this part. But uh, well, looking at this, we are not going to make it. Okay, here we go. 248. Yes, we are behind. Too much behind. So what I'm going to do now is start overclocking the CPU. So I'm hoping to go like 5.3, 5.4. We don't know, but we have some uh, magic tricks up on our sleeves. 
to be able to beat uh, the small Intel. Okay, so what you're going to do now is to raise uh, the clock uh, speed, let's say, to a fixed of uh, 51. Just try easier. Okay, we have a crash. So, change of plans. We go into the BIOS and uh, we do some more uh, steady way. So, okay. As you can see, we have... Uh, 1900 uh, FCLK, but what we need now is uh, a stable frequency, and then we can raise this stable frequency. Same for uh, the voltage, so we are going to start with 1.5, so we have negative 46. Uh, we can do even 1.6, there's no problem at all. World of Warcraft is a single threaded benchmark, games, but well, for me, it's a benchmark, and um, uh, well. Bloodline, usually with this board, even with the LN2, I use L level 3. It's really hard that I need level 4, so this should be uh, pretty stable at these settings. So here we are done for now. Okay, so now I'm going to start playing at 5 gigahertz and slowly raising until the games crash. So we just need to finish the benchmark. This is like a death match, so we don't need the uh, stability also because it's a very extreme setup and I don't know why but I kept pushing the delete key and I entered the BIOS again so you know sometimes uh, <laughs> it's kind of that I'm used to do like this every time but anyway let's go back to our benchmarking okay so now we have a steady 5 gigahertz and 1.48 volts that is fine and for now we keep it that way uh, what I'm going to do is raising a bit and see how far we can go because now we are going to push the maximum frequency that this cooling system allows us to go. I really hope that will be 5.3 at least uh, too, because we need some advantage here and I really hope that frequency alone will give that advantage to us. So 5.2 and still fine. So 5.3 seems fine. Yeah, let's see, 5.4, maybe we can match even the 5.6 of the Intel, who knows, and 5.5, um, I think, okay, 5.4, maybe I can try to boost a bit the voltage and see how the system will react, if we can gain that 100 megahertz more, because I think we really need that. Okay, I just tried a couple of voltage uh, and, uh, well, uh, even 1.6, but uh, 5.4 gigahertz is the maximum we can run with this cooling. So, well, let's try and see if we, now we can beat uh, the Intel. Okay, ready? Go. Look at this. Okay. Seems that now we have a chance. I mean, we have like 400 megahertz more. We should be able to beat that. Too bad that, I don't know, maybe there was something that gave us a bad 0.1% uh, loss, but, well, we don't care about that. We need average. We need an average of uh, more than 256. And it seems that so far we may be able to do it. Not by far, but we may be able to do it. Getting lower. We are really close, close. And this is a nasty zone for the FPS because as you can see here, we have big drops. If you know what the workout, you know that uh, it can be really a pain uh, in some part of the game. Okay, so 253, we are behind. We are behind. Yes, I think we cannot make it, even because we are 180 here, and stop, okay, 259, we are still behind the Intel, but I have something that uh, we may give us some edge to push the, to push the result a bit higher, 
maybe it's not, uh, well, it's kind of a dirty trick, but let's try. Wait a second, I'm now editing the video and I'm watching again the footage. And well, I just noticed that we beat Intel. We just beat Intel. I don't know what I was thinking. And uh, maybe I was thinking 266 or something, but anyway, the video is still very interesting. So keep watching. All right, so if you don't know, uh, the Ryzen 5950X is a dual CCD. That means that uh, we have a small latency penalty because uh, the, the intercore latency is higher because two CCD, there's a big jump in between. So what I'm going to do now is to disable one of the two CCD and disable as well SMT that, uh, well, mostly we have a gain for disabling one CCD. The SMT on AMD doesn't really uh, help a lot, but it helps. So with this, uh, let's say, little dirty trick, we should be able to have uh, some FPS uh, more than the Intel, in theory. Well, um, it's a dirty trick because uh, with the Intel, I can disable SMT and gain some, uh, sorry, H HD hyper trading. So maybe when we do the rematch, uh, I can try to disable that on Intel and see if we can push it a bit further. But uh, now our main goal is to beat that Intel. All right, so now, as you have seen, we have only eight threads, eight core, eight threads, no SMT, only one CCD, less intercore latency. And by looking at this, uh, it seems that maybe this time we can do it. So let's get to it. All right, time test one. So when I do time test one is because I disable everything that uh, goes uh, uh, beyond our control. So uh, MPC, weather effects. So the benchmark is uh, completely equal uh, every time so this is a fair uh, fight because when i launch this benchmark is the same as uh, uh, i launch this benchmark on another platform because when i do this the game will react at the exact same way so it's a fair fight okay ready go 270 maybe we have a 280 290 we have a good start now 300 as well so i think this is the good one Looking at 1% uh, and 1% uh, lows, it seems so. Now, remember that in this part of the benchmark, uh, we will have a drop. And sometimes if the drop is big, uh, we can lose. But if we can pass the next, let's say, 10, 15 seconds, we may be able to do it. Surprisingly, here I have 137 and Intel was like 141 or something something like that, 145. So we are not that far in terms of, let's say, um, stuttering, micro stuttering. So it's a head to head. Yeah, it's a kind of an unrealistic situation because nobody will run a system like this for daily. But anyway, we are doing it for fun. So almost there, 277, we, have, we made it. And stop, okay, 280. So, our best uh, record in this uh, benchmark is 280, from 256, 280. It's a lot. So next time, uh, the Intel, we will need a really better cooling than a single stage. Interesting thing is that uh, we are more or less there with the 1% low and uh, lower at the 0.1% low. That gave us a bit of thinking. Uh, so. Theoretically, the Intel is better as uh, uh, stuttering, micro stuttering, and that kind of stuff. So this is an interesting discovery. All right, it seems that uh, the Ryzen, after a very hard fight, uh, won this battle, but the war is not over yet. And well, let me know in the comment section if you think that disabling one CCD and SMT was fair uh, against the Intel. But uh, well, now we can expect uh, well, I made the test, so I'm definitely going to add more cold to this uh, battle. And next time we will do the Intel with the cascade phase change, the unit that I have there in the back. So we are talking about negative 96 degrees. So we are doubling the cooling power and push uh, the Intel further. So we can see if uh, uh, we can finally beat uh, this one. And well, then I will bring uh, this 
CPU to negative 96, and well, probably we are going to end up with liquid nitrogen and see at the top maximum extreme cold uh, uh, how they end up. So let me know if you enjoyed this fight. I really hope that uh, you had fun. Uh, write what you think about the trick of the CCD in the comment below. And well, like, subscribe and see you in the next one.